know, and it's like... And those are the kinds of decisions that, that people and families make. Yeah. Well, I guess this year I don't get a PET scan and I roll the dice. You roll the dice, exactly. Because I need the $5,000 for rent, for mortgage, for food, for prescriptions. And yeah. there's supposed to be some help in the stimulus package to extend um, health care benefits to folks that have been laid off. But we'll see if it survives committee and what it ends up looking like. Yeah. But it's scary. It is very, very scary. Um, and, you know, I, I, I understand this. And my heart goes out to all those people out there that, uh, that yeah. are in the same boat I am. It's, uh, yeah. it's a tough position to be in. Especially, you know, I, I, I mean, I have a daughter, but she's grown. Right. Um, she's, I won't tell you how old because then you'll be able to figure out how old I am. Well, but you uh, have a grandson from her. I have a grandson, yes. A uh, daughter and a grandson who I adore. Um, but, um, but so I, I mean, obviously I don't have to worry about them. Uh, you know, my daughter's all grown up. But, um, but there are a lot of people out there with kids, you know, mm -hmm. that, are, um, that are unemployed and... Uh, There's a lot of folks taking care of their parents. There's a lot of folks taking care of their kids. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's an ironic spiral. It's not ironic. It's a scary spiral. You lay people off. They don't have the income to make the mortgage payments. They go into default. Their house gets foreclosed on. Now you have another, <laughs> a whole other set of, of mortgage loans that aren't being paid off. Yeah. So the banks don't loan any more, even less because you know, things keep failing on them. Companies end up laying off more because you don't have anybody spending money in the stores which just creates more people who can't spend money in the stores. <laughs> it's, it's an unstable system, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, it's propped up through consumer spending. And yeah. as soon as that stops... Yeah. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I have, I have faith. I'm not asking God to take care of me, but, um, <laughs> but you know, I can take care of myself. But, um, mm -hmm. but I have faith that things will be okay. You know, can I ask way. him to, make sure, to, to help you see the opportunities when they come along? Yeah. I think God has already done that for me. <laughs> I really do. I feel so blessed. Um, as scary as it is, yes, right? Yeah. Even, even unemployed, I feel blessed. Um, you know, the, the things that have happened to me over the past year, just, you know, just hooking, the, the fact that we started this group and hooking up <laughs> with the people that I have and the friends that I have, you know, you mm -hmm. and Stacy and, and, and uh, Lily and Renee and, mm -hmm. and all my, you know, these people that I didn't have in my life not that long ago. And this is, this is so cool. It I is. am so very blessed. I really am. And, yeah. um, and, uh, and, People like Tambria and, um, yeah. and Father Russ. Yeah. And that you know, whole crew. That, that whole crew, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Angie. And Angie, Angie the sweetheart. Angie needs a shout out. Yeah. Uh, Angie obviously can't see this. She's uh, on her boat. But, um, but hi, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> if you get to see this on YouTube, hi. <laughs> Angie's a sweetheart. Angie's in the Coast Guard. She's a sweetheart. Angie's at, an un Angie's at an undisclosed location. <laughs> undisclosed location, yes. But she is a sweetheart. And hi, Shasta. <laughs> Shasta is my favorite pit bull. Mm -hmm. yeah. Father can keep her from jumping on the TV now. <laughs> <laughs> She's a sweetheart. She is just such a sweetheart. And, um, and a guy magnet. And a guy magnet. <laughs> and I'm beginning to wonder if that's a good thing, you know? Well, photos of Shasta are a guy magnet. Mm. In person, Shasta will not tolerate strange men. Yeah. I know a few that I would like to have her eat. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the little dog alone. Go after the big man. Yeah. Uh, one in particular. What was his name? I thought he had that name that we're not supposed to speak of. <laughs> Oh, yes. yes. He who shall not be mentioned. He who shall not be mentioned. Anyway, yeah, enough of that. From that other big end shoreline town. <laughs> uh, yes. Anyway, silliness. But, uh, <laughs> but I really do. I feel blessed. You know, even, mm -hmm. 
Even with the nonsense that's going on and being unemployed. Yeah. Um, and, and I see opportunities in this, you know, already. It's just, um, it's not the end of the world. Right. right. And, uh, and my life has been so cool of late, so. I, you know, I'm really not complaining, even though. Even though you're complaining a little. <laughs> even though, right, maybe I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit scared. Right, and, and, and rightfully so. This is, this is not a good time for, for pretty much anybody. Um, nobody's coming through this unscathed. Some folks are faring better than others. And, and having just lost your job, yeah. there's no safety net. There's no safety net. It's a, you know, and it's, it's a, aside from the fact that, that you lose your job, then you're unemployed, which is obvious, um, and you don't have an income anymore. And your health insurance is typically tied and to health employment. Health insurance is, yeah. Aside from that, you know, you lose, um, your, your, obviously your job is, is, tends to be tied to your sense of self-worth right. yep. and who you are. Your and identity. And, and there are all those people, you know. I mean, I... Fourteen years of friendship. Four, Fourteen years of uh, friendship with people that, um, that now, that I was seeing every day, you know. For God, for the past 14 years, and now I'm cut. I mean, that doesn't mean I won't see some of these people again. But, right, right. But, but I'm cut off. You're cut off, and, and it's, um, it's a change in routine. Yeah. It's a major change in routine, and, and that's not easy for a lot of people to deal with. Yeah. It's such a dramatic thing. Like you said, 14 years. Yeah. You know, I, I watched my dad um, get laid off and search for work and be told he was overqualified to stock grocery store shelves at night as a part-time job. Yeah. You know, what do you care if, if he's willing to take the, the, the eight bucks an hour just to bring something home, but they didn't want to hire him? I, I've heard that a lot. You know, it's, you know, unemployment runs out and... Yeah, where are you? Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't happen to have a husband. Or in his case, a wife. In his case, a wife. <laughs> Uh, in my case, a husband. <laughs> um, it's scary. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I hear that a lot. But you know, people are. I mean, there's a lot of very qualified people out of work right now. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, yeah. It's 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 tough. And and then the 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 other side of the coin that you that that you start to hear about is because you have so many people out of work. Jobs that would normally have been entry level jobs for college grads are being, you know, uh, a kid graduating in, in economics or business or finance or something from, from college is going to go for one of these, you know, business or economics jobs. You've got a whole swath of experienced Wall Street people who are clamoring for those jobs at those lower pay rates. Yeah. College kids are, are you know, aren't going to compete with it because they lack the experience. So you have your reduced job market on the other end of the scale, on the other side of the scale, too. Yeah. It's, That's right. There's a yeah. lot of ramifications to it. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm hopeful. Yep. You know, we got a we got a president in there now that uh, that actually seems to be looking to do something and fast. Well, which he, he's a community organizer. He's he's an urban politician. Yeah. If there's if there's something that he's done his entire career. It's empower people to help themselves and help them find jobs. Yeah. The right man at the right time? I hope so. Yeah. Could be. I mean, obviously, and he said it himself, you know, he inherited this. And, <laughs> and it's like, and talk about stepping into it, you know, <laughs> um, the proverbial you know what. It's like, <laughs> this poor guy, you know, look what he inherited. On the other hand, you know, and, and it's a it's a tough it's a tough situation. But on the other hand, if he can pull this off and pull us oh, out yeah. of this, you know, he's going to be like big time hero. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. But um, but well, hopefully. the same thing that that you know depend that always happens. Depending on who you talk to, you'll hear hear different stories, because you have to, you'll have to keep in mind, the bailout did start under George W. Bush, with the whole tarp money. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure people will be talking about how 